I was distracted when I came here because of all the beautiful women. You could just about handpick any woman you wanted. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference in the modern Filipino. For under 1,500. I have never seen an angry Filipino. They were throwing fruit at me. Hi, please tell us where you're from and how old you are. Well, actually, I spent most of my life in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm uh, going on 87. 87 years old. Wow, you look very healthy. Thank you. I'm a clean liver. Mm -hmm. And I've been taking vitamins for 60 years. And I got exercise. So I, I think that's all okay. part of it. How long have you been here in the Philippines? About 22 years on and off. So what brought you here initially? Why did you come to the Philippines? Uh, I had a Filipino wife before, mm -hmm. my last wife. And we were living in Hawaii. And of course, Hawaii is very expensive. So she said, um, look, why don't we move to the Philippines? Because as you know, I'm from the Philippines, so everything will be cheaper. We can build a house, which we did. So, um, we made the transition. Okay. I just let everything go and came here and lived and I loved it. And you loved it. What do you love about the Philippines specifically? What kinds of things do you enjoy? Well, I, I like the tropics. I've always been in the tropics. Mm -hmm. I, was, I served in the military in the Royal Air Force in the UK for four years. And that's what introduced me to beautiful weather, mm -hmm. beautiful country, environment, etc., etc. You mentioned your wife earlier. Are you still married right now? or No, no. We got a divorce mm -hmm. after 10 years. Okay. And the reason we split up is I was distracted when I came here because of all the beautiful women. <laughs> and uh, it can happen to anybody. Yeah. Speaking of the beautiful women, uh, what's it like dating Filipinas compared to Hawaii? Is there a big difference? And absolutely, there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. However, there's a big difference in the modern Filipina. Now, mm -hmm. when I came here, and, let's say around 22 years ago, super easy to meet Filipino women. But with cell phones and social media and so on, that got in the way because, as you probably know yourself, it's no eye contact. Yeah. Uh, you can get, you can bang into them while they're on their phone, <laughs> right? Yeah. Whereas before, you go to the mall, and you could just about handpick any woman you wanted. Mm -hmm. Because there wasn't as many foreigners, yeah. and they wanted to meet foreigners, because we were in novelty. I see. So it was very, very easy to meet the girl. And very nice, respectable girls. And uh, now things are different. Okay. Um, you can't just go hang out and even walking around the mall. Mm -hmm. you, you can't really form a quick relationship. I understand. For those people that are looking to form a proper, long-lasting relationship, what is the best method for them to meet Filipina, do you think, still well, today? Well, of course, online is mm -hmm. the usual way, right? If you meet somebody by chance, well, that's it. It is by chance mm -hmm. because, it, in my opinion, it doesn't happen often. Yeah. I think the best way is to get introduced by someone. Uh, if you meet a girl and she's not, doesn't seem right for you, you can say, well, do you have a sister? Do you have a cousin mm -hmm. who might be interested in meeting you? Know? And those are venues how to, to reach someone else. Okay. Because a lot of them want to meet a foreigner, but they just are holding back for some reason. Yeah. I'm not talking about just me, old guy, you know, I'm talking mm -hmm. about in general, okay. which is what I hear from my friend. So there's always Tinder and all the usual online apps, and right? And so, dating services. Yeah. Oh, what about these days? Are you seeing anyone? Are you just uh, single? What are you um, doing? I don't know how to put it. I do have a visitor that mm -hmm. comes in to see me okay. once or twice a week. Okay. And we have an arrangement, and uh, it works quite well. Mm -hmm. I've known this person for a few years, but now that she's over the mark, okay. <laughs> uh, I feel bad saying this, 
but I've kind of, I kind of got a limit on how old I would like the person to be. Yes. Um, I really have no reason to complain because of my age. Correct. But looking at the other way, this mm -hmm. is what I want. True. So, um, what I have right now is, is, is quite good. Okay. But uh, I have no intention of ever marrying again. Mm -hmm. um, my marriage dissolved about 12 years ago. I see. And in between that, I've had relationships, but not for marriage. Okay, I understand. So, um, I really, I didn't realize that this would happen. But I really, really like being on my own because yeah. all those years, there was never really a lull in, in between relationships. It was just like continuing, you know? Okay. So I never really had a break. The only break I would have would be when I went on a trip. I feel yeah. I'd make an excuse to go <laughs> somewhere, you know? And that kind of worked. Yeah, man, we need our freedom sometimes. I mean, on all, we need our own space, so it's understandable. It's crucial. Mm -hmm. And so I've had a taste of that for actually over a year. Okay. And I'm so happy with it, being able to finally do whatever I want without a complaint, without anything. Okay. And um, I really like that. And when I want to meet somebody, it's, it's, here it's easy mm -hmm. for me because I will really, I've gathered a few friends together. Some are friends with benefits. And so I see. So that kind of keeps me going. Interesting. So what about like health issues, health problems? Many people are concerned that the Philippines doesn't have the, you know, the systems or the capability to meet their health needs. That's an excellent question because it's a tremendous issue. Mm -hmm. And even people here have died of their sickness. Yeah. Because, especially some local people, because they don't have the money and whatever disease they have, they'll just live with it, hoping it'll go away yeah. or some family member will offer to pay the medical expenses. So uh, this is, uh, even myself, it can mm -hmm. hit me anytime. Yeah. Fortunately, I live very, very well. I, I live clean. And I, I watch my vitamin intake, and I read up on all the issues, and so on about uh, health and longevity. Okay. Because my goal is to hit a hundred. Okay. So I've got what, fourteen years to go. I think you can do it. You look very healthy to yeah, me. Yeah. So. Yeah. I I think I can make it if I yeah. just keep doing what I'm doing. I see. So I'm living a stress-free life and uh, walk every day mm -hmm. a lot yeah. uh, and I don't even get tired which is amazes me because they say well walk until you're out of breath yeah so I do that and I, I don't get out of breath <laughs> you just end up somewhere like, new <laughs> yeah, when is it gonna happen you know so I'm grateful for that okay but my problem now is I interfere with other people's lives because I want to share how I live mm -hmm. with other people that live an unhealthy lifestyle. You know, yeah. Chips, and cokes, and diet soda, which is all BS. Yeah. And it's hard for them to give that up. I notice Filipinos love eating food uh, <laughs> at it's the malls not, every weekend or any time we get. Unfortunately, it's not real food. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what we eat is, I'll give you some examples. If you go to the little food stores and you'll be cooking something like, like a bat mm -hmm. oil, that oil could be recycled half a dozen times. Okay. And you wouldn't know it. True. So who knows where it's been? You're right. And uh, surprisingly, there's very little food poisoning here. <laughs> I, I guess we're all, even myself. I must be immune because of some of the stuff I eat. For those people that think uh, about budget and stuff, do you think it's reasonable for someone to live in the Philippines as a single man for under 1,500 USD? It is definitely possible. 
Well, there are people that can live on under six hundred dollars a month. But what about the standard or quality of living? Can they have air conditioning or just do they have to eat every meal at home? Or do you think it's still reasonably okay? Well, of course it depends what part of the country you live in. Yeah. There are parts of the Philippines that are very cool. Mm. You don't need an air conditioner. If you go to a place like Baguio up in the mountains, yeah. have you been there yet? I haven't been there yet. I keep you hearing about it. There. Okay. If you go there, you'll see everybody wearing jackets. Wow. I and, miss jackets. <laughs> yeah. So this is what you will find there. And people like that kind of temperature, okay. that kind of lifestyle. And it's optional. You know, you can maybe get tired of it. You come down to, to the heat. Yeah. Uh, the beauty of the Philippines is we have over 7,000 islands. Yeah. Take your pick. You know, explore as many as you can. Any regrets from the past? 22 years of coming to the Philippines, something that you wish you did differently, maybe? Not in going to the Philippines. Yeah. The Philippines um, is my Hawaii. Okay. You know, um, I love Hawaii. It never leaves here. Okay. Always here. Yeah. But what this place has to offer in the and the selection of things you can do in the Philippines. Beautiful water, and the water is warm. Mm -hmm. In Hawaii, the water is cold, which is hard to believe in a tropical island. But that's because you're out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yes. You see? So, and there's little things, the Filipinos themselves. I could stay here just for that. For the people, they make up everything, right? Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. If you go to New York, any of those places, the horror stories I hear from people, it's unbelievable. It seems like so many people are angry in the U.S. Yeah. mainland. There's always something to be angry about. I have never seen an angry Filipino. Yeah. I've never seen a Filipino yelling at somebody. Uh, they are so passive. But in a nice way. For sure, yes. You know, they could be, if you rub one the wrong way, you, yeah, they might just blow yeah. yourself up. But I've never seen it. But as long as you're respectful towards them, they are the same towards you, right? Respectful. Yeah. yeah, because some foreigners are not too good at that. I've seen it myself. Yeah, they you have. Yeah. yeah, it's really not something like, that I want to be part of. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a foreigner, you know. And you're just the helper. They have the sense of entitlement, maybe, right? Yes. I've seen it, yes. yes. So I do treat people with respect, and I smile at them as mm -hmm. often as I can but when I pass them by. Yes. It's hard for me to ignore them. So I give some kind of sign that I'm approachable or I like them. Yes. Whatever. Okay. And that always seems to work. And sometimes you even stop and chat. Okay. But um, the Filipino mentality, I don't know how they do it. I mean, yeah. tomorrow, there's thousands out there that don't know where their next meal is going to be. Yes. How can you be laughing and joking around and knowing that? It's true. You're absolutely right. And I think that's why so many foreigners like myself and yourself love the Philippines. Uh, because there are many countries similar tropical or whatever but it's just something about the Philippines I think and um, lastly you mentioned something about videos and making videos like that so tell me a little bit about that what do you mean I've been here all this time and I have left many times because like you I'm a filmmaker yeah and I would go all around Asia and shoot collect my footage and come home and edit and um, now I'm kind of running out of countries. <laughs> so you visit many places before and you decide to settle in the Philippines. Yeah, over and over and over. And then I got hooked up with a guy in England who made video travel guides. And that involved videos uh, to attract British people mm -hmm. to Asia, to the Caribbean, anywhere that British people like the vacation, we would go there and make a video. This is a perfect place for digital nomads. Mm -hmm. 
It's a good base, number one. And um, the people that you may want to shoot are very receptive. Mm -hmm. I've shot in some places, I forget where it was. It was uh, maybe in, I don't know if it was Thailand or not, or it was either Thailand or uh, China or something. Okay. But they were throwing fruit at me while I was shooting them. Like this, you know? And no smiling. Mm. Very this different is what gets here, me. right? <laughs> Everybody's smiling. Yes. It makes your videos look like a fantastic now, video. Of course. Where can some people find your videos? Do you have a YouTube channel or? Yeah, my uh, main. I had five channels at one time. My goodness. I sold one. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. It's fine. You can do that. that. I sold one, and three of the others are doormat. I just ignored them. Yeah. For now, I'm in the process of reviving them. Okay. Then I have the one main active channel, which is Global Video Pro One. Awesome. Global Video Pro. One. I'll be sure to put the link in the description so people can check that out. Sure. Okay. So right now I've got 174,000 subs. Amazing! You got more than me. Yeah. <laughs> and 80 million four hundred thousand views a lot of views a lot of views and um i think i mentioned that i took five months off which okay. hurt me bad it does happen you got to yeah. be consistent right really hurt me so now i'm climbing back out of the hole okay and where i'm at now is not where i was at five months ago definitely as far as content is concerned mm -hmm. because Content now is, you know, TikTok and uh, shorts. Everything's cetera, gone to stuff. short form content. And then, yeah. and then it's going to be AI shortly. It's here already. Yes. And I want to get in on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I had demos presented to me for AI. My God. Plug in a few, uh, what you call? Keywords. Keywords. Yeah. And your story's right there. They write it for you, right? Yeah. So all our text for our videos mm -hmm. can be written in, uh, in, in seconds. two seconds, exactly. Yeah. Well, do you have a favorite island somewhere that you like the most from? No, there's too many. There's too <laughs> many. There's, there's a healing island where every year they have healers that come from all over the world, practically. Okay. And they do faith healing and so on. And I've done videos on that. I had a young lady. She was about 18 years old. And she had, oh yeah, she had a big cyst on her breast. Okay. And somebody said, you have to go to the hospital to get that taken care of. Went to the hospital, told her how much it cost, thousands, just for a biopsy. Yeah. And so here comes the healing event, right? Psychic healing. And she was advised to go there, which she did. I found out, I got to meet this girl, and I said, do you mind if I shoot you? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. And um, so she says, yes, I don't mind. Yeah. So I'm sitting about this close to her. Yeah. This is her. And the faith healer's behind me. And he's got a long stick, prodding stick. Yeah. Don't ask me why. So the session starts, and the healer says to me, okay, I want you to feel the lump, okay? So it's no problem feeling her breast. I can go off of that. So I'm feeling her breast, and sure enough, there's a big cyst there. So yeah. Says, yeah, I got it, I got it. So he says, okay. So maybe I say a lot of prayers, went through motions, and then prod the stick a little bit, not to hurt her, just prod the stick in certain places. And then uh, after about 15 or 20 minutes, he says, uh, okay, we're done. Um, I'll check. And he says, it's gone. Yeah. And so he asks her, how do you feel? Well, I don't feel, I don't feel anything. I don't feel pain, I don't feel anything. So I got to be last and said, you feel it? No. Incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, Ian, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate all your advice and feedback and sharing your story. Yeah.
I, yeah, it was fun talking to you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, good. 87 years old, living by himself in the Philippines. Please leave your thoughts down below about today's video. Let me know what you think of his experiences. If you take the time to write it, I take time to respond. Share any thought that you have. I would love to know your thoughts. And let me know what do you think about the dating scene in the Philippines. If you've been here a long time, if you know what it was like before the internet and the rise of social media, I would love to know if you've noticed any kind of changes. Yeah, so that's his story. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And share this video with someone else that might also enjoy it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.